Ayan. So again, anyong ha sa iyo. Good evening everyone. Anyong ha sa iyo. Good evening everyone. Ayan. So let's start. Okay, number one. So let's start our our discussion for tonight. It will be papasadahan lang natin yung mga coverage ng crop protection. But we do not know if I do not guarantee 100% na nalabas lahat to. But some of the question might be lalabas sa board exams. Okay, at least you know already what's the difference between, uh, what's the difference among the choices given. Okay, so let's start. So before that, so wag muna natin i-discuss yung about sa scope ng gaganapin na hostess for tomorrow. Okay, so we will have, so the question is, uh, the alternate host are plants on which some pathogens must develop to complete its blank. Okay, letter A, life cycle, B, infection, infection cycle, C, disease cycle, letter D, secondary cycle. So when you talk about alternate host, meaning pag merong existing na host, meron ding isa pang host. No? What's the reason of having, uh, parang waga pa, meron kang reserve ang host. Okay, if this is the other host and then we have the another host here, so it's a, it, that's what we call alternate host. Okay, so meron parang meron kang substitute. If ever the the primary host will diminish, okay. So our plans on. Admit na si Ma'am Lorena. Ayan. Our plans on which some pathogens must develop to complete its blank. Uh, ano yung magdevelop? Okay. Ano yung magdevelop? Ano yung magdevelop sa pathogens? So we need to understand the question. Alternate host are plans on which some pathogens, no? Some of the pathogens now must develop to complete its blank. Ano yung nagde-develop sa kanya? So the correct answer for number one is letter A. That is a life cycle. So the correct answer for that is letter A. Kasi yung nagde-develop sa kanya is life cycle. Hindi infection cycle. Because if infection cycle pinag-uusapan, that's already a uh, disease infected already by the uh, hosts no? or by the uh, by the pathogens. And we talk about disease cycle, it means in the cycle of the disease of how this disease become matured or how this uh, live uh, for matagalan or for short term ganun. Disease cycle. So pag siya pa pag-uusapan namin natin, pag-uusapan namin nat naman natin in the next slide. And then secondary cycle. So when we talk about disease cycle, it is the sequence of events. Ibig sabihin ng sequence of events, ibig sabihin pagkasunod-sunod, no? From a pathogen survival. It talks about the survivability or the mortality rate, no mortality rate of the diseases kung hanggang saan yung survival rate niya. Okay? Plant disease development and back to the pathogen cycle is called the disease cycle or the pathogen's life history. Okay? Pag sinabi natin pathogen's life history, saan ba siya nagsimula, no? Paano siya naging matured muna, tapos ayun, hanggang bumalik siya sa pag sa pathogen cycle. By understanding the disease cycle, chain of events, pag sorry, chain of events, nagkakaroon ng pagkasunod-sunod or sequence of events that contribute to a disease. Ayun. We can find the weakest links and take measures to break the cycle. Ayun. We can find the weakest links and take measures to break the cycle. So most pathogens must survive a period of adverse conditions. Oh, some of the uh, most, uh, mostly of the pathogens can survive. Actually, can survive in the period of adverse condition. Like some of the mga conditions like lumalamig, uh, mainit, ganun. Usually winter, pag malamig, when they do not actively cause disease. Yeah. So the host plant is infected. Okay, the host plant is infected or continues to be infected by plat by pathogens overwintered disease transmitting substance inoculum in the spring okay so that will be in the spring so iba din yung sa, sa situation sa winter iba din yung situation sa spring actually this is a study sa labas sa labas ng bansa natin sa Pilipinas labas ng Pilipinas natin because they have winter and they have spring and like sa atin dito we have only summer and ano ba summer and nakamit ako na yung season natin dito <laughs> Fall? Hindi naman fall. Ano namang fall ang yari? Summer at saka ano, tag-ulan. Yung tag-init at tag-ulan lang. Yun know, meron tayong season dito. Tag-lamig. Yun. So wala talaga, wala, wala namang snow dito nangyayari. So these are the disease cycles. So pag sinabi natin, uh, pag sinabi disease cycles, sequence, no? Or uh, current of events. Kung paano nabuo siya. So let's start here with the survival. And then dito tayo. Uh, how it spreads. So dito tayo sa development of signs muna. 
Wait, wait, wait. Saan tayo mag-start? Ah, sa enuculum pala tayo. Sorry. Sa enuculum tayo, it's either fungi, bacteria, or virus. Okay? And then, in, it will infect the plant. So, dependent on interaction between the host. Depende sa host na kanilang i-infect. And then, nagkakaroon ng infection and invasion. Pathogens and environment. So, maapektuhan yung pathogens. And then, magkakaroon ng pathogens and then magkakaroon ng apektuhan yung ating environment. And then, growth and reproduction ng diseases. And then, magkakaroon ng development of science. So, doon yung makikita yung science. By the way, yung science is not actually the final. Uh, ano, the fine, hindi pa siya final infected by plants. It is only, let's say, initial. No? Okay. So, initial. Yun. Initial. Initial na nagkakaroon ng infection. No? Or, or being infected by a plants. Ayun. So next is we have uh, spread, no? After being after having a sign, so magkakaroon ng spreading. So na sa, sa, sa spreading, dun na malalaman na magkakaroon na ng mga symptoms na yung final na infection, infected ng, uh, by, infected by a uh, pathogens yun. So by air, it could be by air, by water, by soil, yun. Uh, insects, by seed cuttings on humans. So yung mga vectors, it spreads, no? It, it spreads throughout the environment. And okay, so magkakaroon din ng survival, no? yung survival rate niya kung makakasurvive ba siya sa, sa pinagamitan mo ng mga pesticides or other, uh, sorry, other method na gina ginamit mo in order to prevent uh, pathogens or diseases. You know, so debris, spores, infected plants, water, soil, or seeds. Yeah. Yeah, so that is, and if we come to another, no, magkaroon na naman ng fungi or bacterial virus. And yung magkaroon naman ng enuculum. Or pwede din sa it's a spread pa lang without having the, ano, sa survival. No, pwedeng mag-direct sa enuculum. Okay, depende yan. Pag mag-direct siya sa enuculum, ibig sabihin nagkakaroon siya ng, uh, not just, not about the survival rate, but siguro walang crop rotation na nangyari doon sa, uh, sa field. Isa din yan sa magkakaroon ng enuculum. Okay, yung survival rate, pag nagkaroon ng crop rotation, dun, ma-observe mo na yung survival rate ng isang pathogens. Okay, so that is a disease cycle. Now, what is the comparison of, comparison of disease cycles? So we have fungi, bacteria, viruses, and nematodes. So dito lang naman tayo mag-iikot. So uh, we will, uh, di ba, nag-discuss na tayo ng molecules and then uh, viroids. So yun, pahapyaw lang. When it comes to the survival, the fungi, uh, it will survive crop residue, soil, or alternative host. And it can be survived through uh, crop residue, soil, or alternative host. And for bacteria also, no, crop residue, for soil, uh, soil, alternative host, insect vectors, or via insect vectors, nagkakaroon na uh, possibility ng long survivability. Okay, and then we have viruses. Always remember that virus cannot be uh, survive without alternative host or host or primary host. Yun. And then insect vectors. And then so nematodes naman through wrap, uh, crop residue and soil. Again, nematodes can do not need a host and hindi di siya kailangan ng insect vectors. Yun. This, uh, because uh, nematode, as far as we know, it is under the kingdom animalia. Yun. And then uh, for dispersal naman, paano ba siya dumadami? Paano ba nagsispreading? Yung isang uh, pathogen or diseases, it could be by wind, rain, and insects, no? Sa fungi. And for bacteria, it could be by wind, rain, insects also. And for viruses, it could be by insects. Not, uh, pwede natin include dito uh, animals. It could also be uh, human. It can also be the uh, vectors, no? And then sa nematodes naman, uh, sa tillage, yun. Dispersal tillage. Uh, equipment, yeah, and water runoff, it can be no, dispersed by tillage equipment, water runoff. Okay? Pag sinabi mo naman infection, okay, pag sinabi mo infection, uh, sa fungi naman, uh, it is directly wounds insect feeding. Okay, so yeah nga, sinasabi ko sa inyo, but if your plants, uh, pag ang plants ninyo ay nagkaroon ng wounds, there's possibility na it could be affected by a fungi or by a bacteria. Kasi dyan yan, uh, nagsisimula ang host. No, dyan nagsisimula. No, nagkakaroon ng pathogen, pathogen ang isang uh, uh, plants, uh, if nagkakaroon ng direct contact or nagkakaroon ng, wo ng wounds, no? which is uh, dyan yung insect feeding. And then sa viruses naman, nagkakaroon din na sa 
ang infection niya is insect feeding kasi nga yung target ng virus is yung cell it's cell to cell while nematodes is uh, directly so actually we tackle also about uh, nematodes no ano yung mga uh, discuss natin yung uh, yung barrow type na nematodes anong tawag doon kaka anong tawag din doon sa uh, sa surface ng roots lang anong tawag doon sa nematodes na yon so we talk about that how the nematodes infected the plants okay so let's proceed to number two. the question is the plumose type of antennae is is possessed by blank a house flies B, termites, C, mosquitoes, D, grasshoppers. Okay, I'll give you a couple of time to answer your, to answer the question. Ne, kamsa hamnida, kamsa hamnida, kamsa hamnida pala, sorry. Ne, kamsa hamnida. Okay, uh, let's answer the next question. Given so the plumes type of antennae is, is possessed by blank, blank. So that's number two, no? So the choices are house flies, letter A, house flies, letter B, termites, letter C, mosquitoes, letter D, grasshoppers. No kayan tamang sagot. So the correct answer is mosquitoes. Okay, alam naman natin yung pagplumus type, no? Kaya sa mosquitoes, para siyang isang feather dust. Yung, yung sa window na ginagamit natin na pang ano, pang linis, na para siyang feather dust. So let's see what is uh, what it, what plumus looks like. Okay? Sa so house flies, ay, ang kanilang um, antennae type ay aristate. So ito yung forma ng isang aristate. Para siyang grass, as you can see, right? And then we have termites, no? It's moniliform, yan. It is a needle-like, as you can see, it's moniliform. And then, pag mosquitoes naman, it's plumus. Yes, you can see, para siyang feather dust-like. Yung inaano natin sa window na feather dust. And then we have grasshoppers, which is the filiform. So this is the filiform. Also, it looks like a needle type, okay? So these are the types of antennae, okay? Number three, all of these weeds belong to the grass family except blank. A, talahib. B, takit kuhul. C, kogon. D, muta. Or muta. Okay, let's answer the question. All of these weeds belong to the grass family except blank. A. Talahib, B. Takit Kuhul, C. Kogon, D. Muta. The correct answer for this is letter B. It's Takit Kuhul. Let's see kung ano nga ba yung Takit Kuhul. Okay? Talahib, it is a cans grass. Actually, yung mga cans grass, ginagamit yan siya sa pag ano. Uh, pag-design, ay sorry, sorry, wala sa pag-design ng ano, sa mga events, like sa mga wedding, ganun, ginagamit yan sa pag-design ng cans grass. Okay? So, actually, wala yan dito sa Pilipinas, no, na sa ibang bansa rin yan, sa ibang bansa yan. So, we have Saccharum spontaneum, ang kanyang scientific name, and then it is a grass, 
and a course, a rec. So a rec, ibig sabihin, tumatayo siya. Ayan, so you can see, tumatayo naman. Okay, it's erected. It is a, it is a perennial glass, grass, okay? It's perennial grass. Actually, madalang lang yung mga ganitong type na uh, grasses. Kung mayroon ganito, cans grass, no, siguro na naubos na ng mga designer kasi binibili ito ng mga designer kasi maganda itong gamitin sa pag-design kasi it's like a uh, classic type of uh, design. Ayan. So, talahib is also known as cans grass. Next, we have takit kuhul. Ayan. Takit kuhul is a asiatic penny wort ang tawag. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na ano, uh, ginagamit ko dati para mag ano, uh, meron kasi siyang uh, content na yun, pwedeng mag boost sa brain niyo or pampatalino. Ayan, Centella asiatica, it is a broad leaves and is a prostrate, prostrate creeping, uh, sparingly hair or nearly smooth perennial herb with delicate and slender stems rooting at the nodes. So, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na ano, uh, ito ba yun? Or parang hindi ata. It's like a dollar grass ata yung tawag doon. Parang, parang katulad din na ganito yung forma niya. Kaya ito talaga yung parang pabilog ganyan. Yan ang kinakain ko dati when I was studying kasi yung sabi nga nila kakaka na ano daw, nakakapag-brain booster. But actually it's true naman pero hindi siya pang matagalan. Bawal din yun sa mga high, may high blood. Hindi siya pwede sa may mga high blood. Kasi magsistiki yung blood masyado pag, pag ano, um, kumakain ng ganito. So, parang it's dollar grass pagkakalam ko. It's also broad list. So this is a takip kuhol. Okay? And we have the kogon or kogon grass. Okay? So emperata cylindrica grass. So it is a grass. So lumabas ito sa board exam. What is the scientific name daw ng kogon? And that is semperata cylindrica. It is one of the most aggressive grasses worldwide and spreads by an extensive rhizome system. Ano yung kanyang reproductive? It is rhizome system, no? Extensive rhizome system. It is also aggressive na gas among other, among other grasses. Kasi mabilis siyang dumami. Ayan. So that is cogon grass. And we have also the mutha or the mutha it is a nut grass also known as Cyperus rotundus, okay, it is a sedge, okay, it is a sedge. It is a colony forming perennial with a grass-like and appearance that grows approximately 30 centimeter in height. So, actually, lalaki pa yan. Tataas pa talaga yan siya, tapos magkakaroon siya ng mga ganyan-ganyan forma. Okay, so that is Cyperus rotundus. Okay, so that is what we call muta or nut grass. Okay. So, kaya the correct answer for that is Takit Kuhol or also known as Asiatic Pennywort because Asiatic Pennywort is not belong to grass family. It is belong to broadleaves family. Okay? Next, we have number four. Yellowing of normally green tissue caused by inadequate light is called black. A. Chlorosis. B. Blight. C. Mosaic. D. Etiolation. Okay, so what's the correct answer for number four? When we talk about yellowing of normally green tissue caused by inadequate light is called, pag sinabing inadequate of light, hindi siya natatamaan ng lights. 
And there's a tendency na yung normally green tissue ay nagiging yellowing na siya or nag-yellow. So the multiple choices are, uh, the choices are A, chlorosis, B, blight, C, mosaic, D, etulation. So the correct answer for this is letter D. It is etulation. Pag sinabi natin etulation, nagkakaroon ng uh, inadikit light. Kakulangan sa light. So kaya yung green tissue ay nagiging yellow. So ano ba yung blight, sir? Actually, yung blight, okay, to give you, ano, this is the final, let's say a final, ano, touch of uh, pathogens, which is affect, no? It, it will affect the, example, the rice, no? Um, nagkakaroon siya ng direct na ano, pagkamatay, yun. Uh, rapidly, na uh, rapid na pagkamatay ng isang plants because of the blight. Makita niya siya, nagkakaroon agad siya ng yellowing and then mamatay yung plants. Yun. So, iba din yung blast. When you talk about blast, that's an initial sign or initial symptom ng isang uh, disease. Yun. And then mosaic is a virus. We know that it's virus. And then we have also the chlorosis. Okay? So, when you talk about uh, chlorosis, no, nagkakaroon ng lacking sa iron. Okay? Pag sinabi natin lacking sa iron, ako langan sa iron, okay, is a yellowing of plant leaves caused by iron deficiency that affects many desirable landscape plants in Muta. The primary symptom of iron deficiency is intervenal chlorosis. Pag sinabi mong intervenal chlorosis, sa intervene talaga ng isang leaves. Okay? So the development of yellow leaf with a network of dark green veins ay nagiging yellowing due to iron chlorosis. So pag ipang nakita ninyo na mayroong agad na yellow-yellow, hindi ibig sabihin na chlorosis agad yan. So you need to check the leaf vein if the leaf vein is affected. Pag nakikita niyo dyan, as you can see, that is the leaf vein, right? Ito, this is a leaf vein. Dito, may mga leaf vein yan. So, mga vein niya. As you can see, it's a dark green. Pero yung the rest of the part, no, yung hindi natatama ng leaf vein, ay nagiging yellowing. So, that is caused by a deficiency of iron. Usually, yung mga ganito ay meron doon sa munggo, sa mang bean, uh, basta sa mga legume crops. No? Sa mga legume crops, madami yung ganitong iron deficiency. Next is blight. Ito yung tinasabi kong blight sa inyo. Yeah, any of various, uh, various plant disease whose symptoms include sudden and severe yellowing. Pag sinabi mong sudden and severe, uh, severe yellowing, rapidly ang papatay niya talaga yung plants. No? Browning, then nagkakaroon ng spotting, weathering, or dying of leaves and flowers, fruit stems, or the entire plant. Usually, paraming blight naman sa rice. Ayun. Okay. Lalo na sa vegetative stage or milking stage, maraming nagka nagkakaroon talaga ng effect or affected by uh, blight. Yun. And then this one is what they call the mosaic virus. No? So you can see nagkakaroon ng uh, distinguished uh, shapings or distinguished pattern ng, um, ano, uh, ng, ng disease. Yun, yun. So you can see, may bukol-bukol. That causes infected plant foliage. To have a mottled appearance. Pag sinabi mo mottled appearance, no? May mottled na. Iba-ibang klase ng shapings, no? So you can see. And then such viruses come from a variety of unrelated lineages. And consequently, there is no taxon that unites all mosaic viruses. So this is actually a problem in the mosaic viruses, no? Um, the reason kaya nagkakaroon din ng mosaic viruses because of its uh, affected host or there is a living host in it, or alternative host, okay? And this is what we call etulation. Pag sinabi naman etulation, kakulangan. So it's a process of a process in flowering plants grown in partial or complete absence of light. No, uh, it's not just, no, pag sinabi natin absence of light, hindi lang siya nag-yellowing. Also, nagkakaroon ng dwarfing or pagkapandak ang isang ano. And then, yan, it is characterized by long, yun, by long. And then weak stems, no? Uh, mahaba yung stem niya. Meron din ano, etulation part na uh, pandak siya. Tapos, uh, nagkakaroon ng, yung sa internodes niya, nagkakaroon ng ma malaking intervals. Okay? So, it is characterized as smaller leaves due to the longer internodes. So, an internet yung longer internode na sinasabi. Mahaba yung interval ng internodes niya. And a pale yellow color. So, nagkakaroon ng pale yellow colors. You can see 
And then the development of seedlings in the dark is known as scoto morphogenesis and leads to etulated seedlings. No, meron din etulated seedlings na kakaroon ng uh, pagdarken or pangingitim sa seedlings niya. So ito yung tinatawag natin na etulated. Ibig sabihin, this one is perfect. No, pwede siyang, uh, it is exposed to the light. Uh, unlike this one, it's not, it's not. so nagkakaroon siya ng abnormalities. Okay, malalaman natin yan. First, uh, in morphological aspects, uh, malalaman natin na yung leaves niya is naka like yellowish, yun. And then, yung enter nodes niya nagkakaroon ng abnormality, alternate, ano, yung, al yung gaano ka, yung distance, yung long, yung due length, length na ano, enter nodes, no? Okay, let's proceed now to number five. Okay, pathogenicity refers to the ability of the pathogen to cause blank. A, disease, B, resistance, C, susceptibility, D, tolerance. Okay, so let's answer the question. Pathogenicity refers to the ability of the pathogen to cause blank. So what do you think is the correct answer? Choices are A, disease, B, resistance, C, susceptibility, D, tolerance. So the correct answer is disease. We know that pathogenicity, pag sabi mong pathogenicity, it talks about the genesis Genesis or pinagbulan ng isang diseases. So, it refers to the ability of the pathogen to cause diseases. Okay? So, it talks about the uh, ability of the pathogen to cause diseases. Pag pathogenesis, iba din yun. Pathogenicity yun, ability niya. Okay? Number six, what is the correct term of the thorax located in the middle region of the insect body that consists of three regions? A, prothorax. Prothorax, B, mid-thorax, C, mesothorax, D, meso, mesothorax. Okay, so the correct answer is, uh, what is the correct term of the thorax located in the middle? Ano doon tawag sa middle region of the insect body that consists of three regions? A, prothorax, B, midthorax, C, mesothorax, D, mesothorax. The correct answer is, letter D, it is mesothorax. So let's see what is uh, this uh, body regions divided into. So these are the regions in the thorax. So we have this head. We know that the insects is divided into three regions. So we have head, thorax, and the abdomen. Now, ang tanong kasi is thorax. So ano da yung divided into how many region yung thorax? It is divided into three region ang thorax. We have prothorax, mesothorax, at saka si meta 
thorax. So, sa middle, ang tawag doon ay mesothorax. Sa so, front naman, kung saan naka-attach yung head, that is prothorax. And metathorax naman, where is the, wherein the abdomen is also attached. Always remember that prothorax, there is no wings at all in the prothorax. Uh, we have only the mesothorax and the metathorax, which is uh, naka-attach yung mga wings. Okay? So, the correct answer for that is mesothorax. Okay, for number seven, knowing the biology and ecology of the pests and their natural enemies is a must. The following information are required in order to understand the biology and ecology of your crop pests and their natural enemies. Except, so you need to read the choices in order to answer the question. I will give you a couple of minutes to answer the question. Okay, let's answer the question. Ano kayang tamang sagot? Okay. Knowing the biology and ecology of the past and their natural enemies is a must. The following information are required in order to understand the biology and ecology of your crop past and their natural enemies. Except A, damage potential of the past from birth to death noting their destructive stages of development, B, reproductive potential, C, the life cycle of the pests and their natural enemies, the length and size of the different stages of development, D, provide for free technical services in the introduction of natural enemies of the farm owned by town mayor 
even during on Sundays and holidays, so the mayor will not be moved or replaced from his current position as past management manager. Sorry. So what's the correct answer? Kasi tinatanong yung exec. Okay. So the following information are required in order to understand the biology and ecology of your crop pests and their natural enemies. So the correct answer for that is letter D. Kasi nga, parang mayroon siyang may pagka-political, no? mayroon siyang uh, political advertisement. Yung letter D, as you can see, so the mayor will not remove and replace from his current position as pest manager. So, yun. Hindi naman alam din ni mayor kung ano yung ginagawa niya. And then, ano din pagkaalam ni mayor pagdating sa mga ganitong bagay. So, it it is not actually the obligation of the mayor. It is already the obligation of the municipal agriculturist officer. Okay? No? Regarding on this matter. Okay? So, let's now proceed to number eight. Question number eight. A localized necrotic area also referred to as lesion. A. Conquer. B. Spot. C. Wilting. D. Molting. Okay, let's answer now the question. Okay. Okay, localized necrotic area also referred to as lesion. A, conquer, B, spot, C, welting, B, motting. The correct answer is letter B, it is spot. Ano nga ba yung spot? Let's see, what is a spot? Spa, a uh, conquer, let's put on it sa conquer. Ito yung mga kadalasang uh, sakit ng uh, citrus. Yung uh, conquer. No, it is common to citrus. Conquer, it is a plant disease caused by numerous species of fungi and bacteria that occurs primarily on woody species. Sino ba yung nauna dyan? It is si fungi or si bacteria. Actually, uh, hindi naman magkakaroon ng fungi without any host from the bacteria. So it is the bacteria who go first and then followed by the affected by fungi. And then, and bacteria that occurs primarily on woody species uh, symptoms include round to irregular sunken, yan, round to irregular sunken, then swollen, nagkakaroon ng swollen, flatten, and then nagkakrack na, and then nagkakaroon na ng discolored or dead areas on the stems, canes, twigs, limbs, or trunk. So, namamatay na yung, uh, yung, ano, tawag dyan, uh, yung prutas, yung stem ay affected na, and also the leaves. Yan. So that is a conquer. That is common to uh, citrus. And we have a leaf spot. So this is a leaf spot. It is a limited, discolored, disease area of a leaf that is caused by fungal. Yan. By fungal, bacterial, or viral plant diseases or by injuries from nematodes. Yan. From saan siya? Galing injury siya from or uh, by injuries from nematodes, insects, environmental factors, toxicity, or herbicides. Pededin, yon. Okay? So, these discolored spots or lesions often have a center of necrosis. Yon. Often have a center of necrosis. So, ayan. So, this is an example of spots or leaf spots. No, Some of them saying na uh, sir, kina, ano yan, uh, kinain daw ng ano, kinain daw ng mga uh, caterpillars. Kung kinain niya ng caterpillars, bakit ganyan, spotting-spotting? Actually, there is specific um, insects talaga na uh, nag, uh, kumain yan. No? Kasi yung example, meron kasing ano din, uh, larvae, sorry, hindi caterpillars pala ang term, larvae. May larvae kasi na pag 
kumain siya dito, paglabos at nabu, uh, nabutasan niya na dito, sa iba na naman siya magbubutas na sa iba naman siya magbutas. And that will cause also leaf spot. Okay? So, isa-isang leaf. And then this is the will, disease, or pagkalanta. No, disrupt, disrupt this flow of water in the in the in the soil. Bakit nagkakaroon ng disrupt of this flow? Kasi nga, kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng wild diseases. Kasi yung pathogens, no, ay uh, tinatrap or kinocover niya yun, yung daanan ng uh, water and the food. Okay? In the soil and in the fluid. So, thus causing leaves to wilt or pagkalanta. Okay? These diseases result to pathogen activity in the vessels or trichids. And we have trachids, trachids, yan. Will pathogens are parasites, yun. They are parasites that can move through the vascular tissue of trees, okay? The pathogens can include fungi, nematodes, bacteria, or other microorganisms, okay? So that is what we call uh, wilt disease, okay? So you should be... Uh, familiar on this because this will uh, this one might come out some more exam okay so next is so the correct answer for that is leaf spot and we have also the mottling in plants the mottling usually consists of yellowish spots on plants so this is yellowish spots and then it is usually sign of disease of malnutrition oh yeah that is already malnutrition kasi nga because of the of the lift no nagkakaroon ng abnormality sa length ng width ng ng leaves ng mga leaves okay and then many many plant viruses cause mottling and some examples being in tobacco vein mottling virus and then bean pod so yun sa tobacco ito talaga usually ang uh, common na sakit yung mottling virus okay and now let's proceed to number 9 an obligate parasite can grow only in associate association with a, non-living host, B, resistant host, C, susceptible host, D, living host. Okay, let's answer the question given. So, sabi to, an obligate parasite can, on, can grow only in association with blank. A, non-living host. B, resistant host. C, susceptible host. D, living host. So, the correct answer for number nine is D, living host. Always remember, pag sinabing obligate parasite, it cannot be uh, survived without a living host. Diba? So, yun ang sabi ko sa inyo. Parang kasi obligate parasite, we have by virus, which is they cannot survive without a living host. They can only be grow only in association with the living host. Okay? The correct answer is letter D. Next. Why the Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority, FDA, nor the Food and Drug Authority, FDA, FDA has no jurisdiction over fum fumigation? So I'll give you a couple of minutes to answer the question. Analyze the situation properly so that you can answer the question.
Ayan, let's answer the question. Hopefully, nakapag-analyze ka ng mabuti because I give you a couple of time to answer the question. Okay, you analyze the question properly. Okay? Why the fertilizer and pesticide authority FPA nor the food and drug authority FDA authority FDA has no jurisdiction over fumigation. Bakit nila sila ng jurisdiction over the fumigation? A, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, DNR, has signed a memorandum of agreement with the NCUPC, the MAPICON, uh, or the Green Charcoal Hydrogen Philippines, to organize the R&D Task Force. B, Republic Act 6969, an act to control dangerous and hazardous substance, is under DNR, is a member of the NCUPC per the court rulings, Letter C, all of the stated reasons. Letter D, per the, per the 2003 Court court of Appeals and 2007 Supreme Court rulings, it is the National Committee on Urban Pest Control, NCUPC, that has the jurisdiction and mandate over urban pest control that includes fumigation. So what do you think is the correct answer? The correct answer is letter C, all of the stated reasons are Correct. Okay, because the DNR, when time, uh, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, it is the MAPICON versus the uh, FDA. Yung FDA ay nag-overpass sa, uh, nag-bypass or nag-bypass dun sa, bypass ba ang term dun? Ay, nakalimutan ko na talaga. Basta nag-ano siya, nag-overpass niya. Overpass siya dun sa power ng, uh, sa power niya, No? Uh, the, FD, uh, the FPA, the FDA, the Food and Drug Authority, and the FPA, yun. FPA, Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority, and the FDA, no, nag, nag overpass sila dun sa power nila. Okay, so, okay. Uh, na, wala naman talaga sila jurisdiction over the fumigation no, na ginawa ng MAPECON. Ito yung MAPECON versus the FDA and the FPA. Okay, so that's why all of the stated reasons are correct. And actually, I give, remember, ginata ko ng article sa inyo nito regarding the, these cases of the MAPECON. Yun. So matagal na to, 2000, near 2000, ano ba to? 2007 or 2003, ang um, cases na to. No? Still now, available pa rin siya sa board exam, ang tanong na ito. Okay. Next, number 11, which among these is a broad lift with A, barnyard grass, B, cogon, C, morning glory, D, muta. Okay, let's check what is the correct answer. Number 11, which among these is a broad lift with? So the correct answer is letter C because letter C is a morning glory. It is a broad lift. So let's check what's barnyard grass. Barnyard grass is also known as a chinecloa cruz galley. It is a barnyard grass. It is a grass. No? It can be identified as having a flat stem, okay? With no ligule, oracle, or pubescence here. Yeah. So that is what we call barnyard grass. And then we have morning glory. So this is a morning glory, a pomea triloba. 
There is a herbaceous annual training, a twining vine with milky sap, simple leaves, and pink to pale purple funnel shaped flowers. It is a broad leaf. As you can see, yung kanyang leaves niya, it is a broad leaf. Okay, so the correct answer for that is morning glory. Next, number 12. Infection occurs when the host plant becomes associated with the cells and tissues of the blank. A, host. B, parasite. C, pathogen. D, susceptible host. Jesus, the reason live is you. Okay, let's check what is the correct answer. Infection occurs when the host plant or infection occurs when the host plant becomes associated with the cells. Oh, you need the cells now associated with the cells and tissues of the blank. So the correct answer is letter A, it's hosts. You and kasi nga affected na yung isang cells because of the other infected cells. Yun. So apektuhan na yung isang or yung neighbor cells niya. No, dumaan, dumadaan siya sa plasmodesmata. Yun. So, infection occurs when the host plant becomes associated with the cells and tissues of the of the host. So, the correct answer is letter A. It's host. Okay? Next question, number 13. A disease identification in plants is called plant disease diagnosis. A, true. B, false. C may be the uncertain. Okay, let's check what's the answer. Disease identification in plants is called plant disease. Diagnosis A, true, B, false, C, maybe, D, uncertain. Disease identification in plants called plant disease diagnosis. Badaan tawag. Ano yung another term ng disease identification? The correct answer is true. Disease identification is also known as plant disease diagnosis. Kasi nga, gusto mong malaman or ma-identify kung ano ba yung type ng pathogen yan. Ano bang klaseng diseases yan. That's true. Okay? Next. Which of the following pests of rice possesses a chewing type of mouth parts? A. Rice bug. B. Green leaf hopper. C. Stem borer. D. Brown plant hopper.
Okay, let's answer the question. Which of the following pests of rice possessed possesses a chewing type of mouth parts? The correct answer is letter C. It is stem borer. Okay, the correct answer is letter C. Stem borer. Next, number. Okay. I saw. Yeah, we have. Bakit sa steam borer, we have rice bog, is pursing sucking ang kanyang mouth parts. Ang green leaf hopper naman ay pursing sucking. Ang steam borer is chewing during larval stage. Ang brown plant hopper naman ay pursing sucking. Yun. Okay? Take note of that. Next question. The use of many dangerous pesticides in the Philippines like the dibro... Uh, it's dibro, dibromochloro propane or DBCP that caused 3,200 Davao banana farmers to become sterile is the failure of blank. Kaninong failure yan? Okay, the correct answer is letter C. It is a failure of uh, FPA or Fertilizer Pesticide Authority. Yan, failure po yan ng Fertilizer Pesticide Authority or FPA. Okay, kasi hindi nila chinek eh. Hindi nila chinek yung type ng pesticides na yan. Okay. Next. Number 16, can the knowledge of scientific names of insects, plant diseases, and leads help in, in, in producing more affordable and sustainable food for our people? I'll give you time to answer the question.
Okay, so yun. Ah, maya na lang chili. Bigay ko, bigay ko yung tama. Ano, magbibigay yan sila ng answer key sa'yo mamaya. Ayan. Sila ma pwede makapagbigay ng answer key kay Chili from 5, ah, 5 daw at saka 13. Ano daw yung tamang sagot? Ayan. AA daw. AA. Ayan. So, let's check now number 16. Okay. Can the knowledge of scientific names of insects, plant diseases, and weeds help in producing more affordable and sustainable food for our people? The correct answer is letter D. Kasi nga, all of the above reasons is uh, correct why it is not ah, sorry the all of the above reasons why it is not very necessary for farmers and uh, licensed agriculturists know the scientific name of insects plant and diseases and weeds kasi hindi naman kailangan na pag pupunta ka sa field no and then magbibigay ka ng recommendation hindi naman scientific name yung ibibigay mo sa kanila sa mga farmers no lalo na yung mga insect names no hindi naman talaga scientific name yung yung sasabihin doon So, uh, kailangan ibigay mo yung mga common names na alam ng mga uh, farmers, no? Kung saan mas applicable yung ano, lingwahe. Yun. So, the correct answer is letter D. All of the above reasons why it is not very necessary, kasi hindi naman siya necessary for farmers and licensed agriculture know the scientific name of insects, plants, diseases, and weeds. Okay? Next, we have number 17. A science that deals with the nature, cause, and control of plant diseases. Kam sami da ne, kam sami da Jason, Jason si kam sami da. Okay, let's check. What's the correct answer? Correct answer for number 17 is letter A, plant pathology. It's the science that deals with the nature, cost, and control of plant disease. It's called plant pathology. Ayan. Next, number 18. In case a disease is not known to you previously, it is necessary to resort to blank. Ano kaya yung dapat gawin?
Okay, let's check. What's the correct answer? Okay, for number 18, the correct answer is better in case a disease is not known to you previously, it is necessary to resort in What's the correct answer for this. I'm sorry, hindi ko na lagi. <laughs> so the correct answer for this is who has an idea? Okay, in case a disease is not known to you previously, it is necessary to resort to not coach postulate. Uh, field diagnosis, laboratory diagnosis, disease assessment. Uh -huh. So the correct answer for this is letter. Lang, ha? Check ko lang yung ano. Ano ako nagawa niyan eh. Tala. Check natin yung file niyan. Pas. Hindi ko na double check, sorry. Nawawala nga ng kuryente doon eh. Mali lang ha. Ayun, hanapin ka muna. So, kung ba yun, saan ko ba yun nakuha? Bago pang isip ninyo. Sorry lang. <laughs> Pero nali lang ha. Okay, so the correct answer for this is letter. Okay, the correct answer is letter D. Okay, disease assessment. Okay, in case the disease is not known to you previously, it is necessary to resort to disease assessment. Okay, para malaman kung ano ba yung sakit talaga niyan. Okay. Para malaman kung saan siya nanggaling din. Okay? Next, next, we have number 19. Stored products pests are effectively controlled by black. Bakit yun na double check?
Okay, let's check what's the correct answer. The correct answer for that is letter store products pests are effectively controlled by letter D, from fumigation. Okay. Ano ba yung fumigation? Ano ba yung dusting? Ano ba yung use of aerosols, irrigation? Okay, dusting, it is a dry, finely powdered chemicals may be mixed. Yun. Powdered, finely powdered chemicals may be mixed with an inert carrier and applied with some type of blower. It control ants, wasps, fleas, and crawling insects. Aerosols, insecticide treatments, disperse a liquid insecticide. Yun. In small droplets or particles for use as a special special treatment for insect control. Okay? And we have irradiation. Meron mga aerosols, ginagamit naman natin usually. And then we have irradiation used to sterilize mass reared, reared insects so that while they remain sexually competitive, they cannot produce offspring. Yan. Gamma radiation can eliminate insect pests of stored grains as well as field crops more efficiently. Yan. Eliminate. Fumigation, the process of using chemical smoke to kill pests. Yan. Like sa mga dengue, ganon, fumigation tawag nun. Like insects or rodents. A method of killing, suffocating, and poisoning the pest inside the large containers, storage facilities, and etc. Yon. Next, number 20. Which among the following is a beetle? Okay, let's check. The correct answer for number 20 is letter A. Letter A, a Spanish fly is a beetle. Okay, let's check. What is Spanish fly? So this is the Spanish fly. It's like a visicartoria with elytra wing type. No, it has a elytra wing type, the first wing type okay, of the insect. And we have dragonfly with membranous wing type. Yeah, it's not a beetle. Okay. And then we have horsefly, ito, with membranous wing type also, or yung langaw sa bahay. And we have fruit fly with membranous wing type also. Yan, sa manga, meron yan sa coconut, we have fruit, fruit fly. Okay, not just dyan din, pati din sa mga citrus type. Okay? So, that's all for tonight. Hopefully you uh, ano, learn a lot. I want to know your scores. Can you uh, drop your scores, please? Okay. Let's check. Jason she got 14 over 20. That's good. Chili she got 17. Evangeline got 15. Erica Joy she got 15. Job she got 14. Justine got 15. Jemaline got 11. It's okay. So thank you very much, everyone. And lastly, we will tackle about, we will discuss on what are the things na lalabas for tomorrow. Ano nga ba yung lalabas na ta, sa nata no, na exams tomorrow? Ito yung mga lalabas sa exam tomorrow. So ilang items subang exam, sir? It is 150 
items. Okay, 150 items. Bakit mo 150 items? Kasi nga, mar masyadong marami yung coverage ng crop protection. That's why it is a isa natin. Okay, so sa history and principles, we will tackle that. So ano yung mga history and principles? Kabilang na dyan yung, um, di ba nag-send ako sa inyo ng file, yung PPT. O, pwede din kayo doon magkumuha ng ideas kasi doon din man ako kumukuha ng ibang tanong sa history and principles ng... Uh, yung 500 yes, slides. Yung 500, yes, yung 500 slides. Doon ako kumukuha ng tanong din sa... Doon ako kumukuha ng tanong sa history and principles. Some of the questions, okay? And then, I have also... Yan, so principles of crop protection and then plant path. Yeah, plant pathology. Isa din yan sa, gagawa, sa kasama bukas. Rudens and other pests, kasama din yan. So ano yung rudens and other pests? Kabilang na din din yung mollusk. Okay, so hindi tayo nag-discuss ng mollusk, right? So, ano na lang, kasi pahakyaw lang naman yung tanong ko doon sa mollusk. No? Uh, konti lang yung tanong ko doon sa mollusk. At uh, saka rudens and other pests. And then with signs, huwag kalimutan. Entomology, mm -hmm. yan. And then we have pesticides and uh, pesticide calculation and calibration of application equipment. Diyan na yung, kasama na yun dyan yung IPM. Yung Integrated Pest Management. Okay? So, Uh, paalala lang na sa history and principles or principles of crop protection ay 30 items po dyan. 30 items tomorrow. Sa plant pathology is 50 items. Sir, bakit madami talaga sa plant pathology? Kasi nga, madami sila sa plant path, di ba? We have bacteriology, virology, nematology, mycology. So, each of, uh, each of them, uh, gagawaan ko ng tanong 10, 10, 10, 10 items. Bacteriology, 10 tanong. Virology, 10 tanong. Uh, nematology, 10 tanong. Mycology, 10 tanong. Sir, yung, yung molecules po ba? Tsaka, ano, viroids kasama? Yes, kasama doon. Mag-mix na yan siya with the plant path. Okay? So, it, it may possible na may lalabas na scientific name. There will be a scientific name. Especially sa mga causal agent. Okay? And then... Uh, sa rodents and other pests, tsaka sa plant pot, kasama din yung characteristics ng bawat pathogen, pathogens, okay? Sa rodents and other pests, okay, so that will be a 10 items, okay? So, it's a mix, mix questions, no? Uh, may scientific names din na nalalabas dyan, and then yung characteristics nila, ayun. And then how they affect the plants, yun. And then sa so weed science naman is 10 items, saan iikot ang tanong? sa top 10 world worst weeds. Doon nang po iikot ang tanong ng weed signs. Sa entomology naman, ang um, it is sa 20 items. Okay? 20 items ang entomology. Alam ko na you are already expert when it comes to the characteristics of the insects. Yon, alam ko magaling na kayo doon eh. Magaling na kayo din sa mga karakteristik ng uh, insects and then magaling na din kayo sa ano sa Pag-identify ng mga wings, antennae, gano'n, saka sa insect order. Ma-perfect nyo talaga yung tomology tomorrow. Okay? So, mix-mix po yan. Hindi natin alam kung saan mapupunta yan. It is actually set A, set B, and set C. Hindi, hindi po lahat. Um, sa online, okay? Sa online, uh, set A lang kayo lahat sa online. Pero sa face-to-face, sa -face, meron silang set A, set B, set C. Kasi nga, mga matatalino yan sila eh. Magkukopya-kopya yan sila eh. Magkukopya-kopya. So, yun. Nag-set A, set B, set C ako. Pero sa online, set A lang tayo. Okay? So, mag-mix lahat ng tanong. So, nakadepende na talaga yan kung ano yung tanong na maabutan si Number one, ano yung tanong mo? Bilang nag pala number one. So, kakabahan ka na. Yun. Kabakaba na tayo dyan. And then, we have next, uh, pesticide and calca. Calca are also known as, pwede na din sabi natin IPM yan dyan. Kasama ay... Uh, IPM to, also known as IPM ko na lang nilagay nito, as overall or major or general topic niya. So, 30 items po yan. Okay? 30 items po tayo dyan sa ating IPM tomorrow. Ayan. So, yan yung kailangan ninyong i-mind. So, sir, kailangan talaga mag-study ako ng plant pot kasi 50 items yung plant pathology tomorrow. <laughs> so, madadali lang yung mga tanong sa plant pot. Hindi na siya mahirap. As long as you are Um, familiar with etulation, dumping off, no? you are familiar with that, madali lang talaga yung mga tanong na yan. Yun. And then, 
And also, di ba, pinapamilyarize ko sa inyo yung signs and symptoms ng bacteria, ng virus, ng fungi, paano malaman na yan ay bacteria, paano malaman at na yan ay symptoms or fungi or nematodes or virus. Ayun! So, yun guys, tomorrow, I'm so excited for tomorrow. So, I'll be giving you time to answer all of the questions. It's 150 questions. So, what are you going to do? You need to shade it in your answer sheet. Dapat may answer sheet na kayo tomorrow, ha? Uh, gusto ko makita siya na nakashade talaga sa answer sheet. You're going to practice na mag-shading shading. Okay? And then, tomorrow, and then, send to me your answer, answer, answers. Kailangan isend nyo sa akin yung answers para makita ko na sumagot talaga kayo. And then, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow evening, we will have our rationale. Eh. So, uh, gusto ko si as early as we can. No? Uh, Sabi, we can have naman siguro. Can we have around, uh, kasi matapos kasi kami tomorrow, alas 3. So, can we have around 5 p.m.? 5 p.m. tayo magsa-start. Can we, uh, can we occupy around 5 p.m., no? 5 p.m. para maaga tayo matapos kasi kailangan din namin tapusin yung final assessment namin dito sa face-to-face. -face. Can we, okay, so, magsa-start tayo tomorrow around um, 5 p.m., okay? So, ayan. So, isa-send ko na lang sa GC yung post-test ninyo. Okay? So, see you tomorrow and congratulations to those who got a um, 13 above. Yun. Lahat ng mga kum nakakuha ng 13 above, that's a good score already. So, it means that you can pass na the board exam. Yun. So, kailangan na mag-prepare na kayo for your ticket. <laughs> for your outtaking. Yung, yung mga damit ninyo, prepare nyo na. Ayun. So, everyone, hopefully you are doing great for tonight. Pwede may lang. Si Kainglet, hindi siya nag-send ng kanyang scores. Kainglet, hindi ka nag-send ng score mo. Ayun. And then, um, so yun lang muna. Okay, para tomorrow, fight, fight, fight na tayo for tomorrow's event. Ayun. So, kaya para makapagsimula na tayo sa extension, guys. Ayan, again, kamsamida. Thank you, everyone. Kamsamida, enahan yung geseyo. Ayan. Good night, everyone. Anyong, anyong haseyo. Bye-bye, everyone. Anyong geseyo, anyong, anyong everyone, anyong mo, mo go seyo. Ayan, sorry, mo, mo go seyo. <laughs> Yun, nakalimutan ko na. Ayan. Bye-bye, everyone, and good night. Anyong ego mo seyo. Bye-bye. Kamsamida.